What's up guys, this is Gabriel from Board Games and Barbells and today we have a little top 10 for you. Top 10 games to play with your grandparents. Let's check it out. So a little disclaimer, uh, these are my opinions. I have my grandparents in mind. They happen to be over 80 years old. And they also have some prior game knowledge, um, you know, classic games, but none of the new modern type board games. The top 10 games that I thought of all have like classic elements uh, from games that everyone knows. And again, this is my opinion and your grandparents could play Twilight Imperium, I don't know, but uh, these are the top 10 games that I would play with my grandparents. And honestly, this works for non-gamers just alike. Let's get started with number 10. Number 10 is Sequence, okay? It's a game that plays two to 12 players. I honestly didn't realize it could play up to 12 players. I thought it was like uh, two to six. Um, either way, it says two to 12 players. Um, you know, this game, you are playing cards it's, it's got a deck of cards. Like I think maybe like technically like two decks of cards. But you're playing these cards, you have a hand of cards and you are laying down cards that match a board and you're trying to get five in a row. So it's as simple as that. Laying, playing cards, trying to get five in a row, there are a few special cards that make it a little interesting. Um, why would I choose this? Well, a deck of cards is very common. Most grandparents and most people have used a deck of cards and play with that. Also, you're connecting five in a row and that has the similarities of Connect Four. Very simple game and a fun one to play with your grandparents. Number nine, Wits and Wagers. This is a fun party game that plays three to seven players. And I think you can play a lot with a lot more. I think I heard uh, Tom Vassell the other day talking about play with like a hundred people. So I guess teams of 10, I'm not sure. What you're doing is you are answering like impossible trivia questions. You are answering the questions and they are all numbers. What you think you are laying them down on a mat and you put them in order and you wager what you think is the answer. It's so funny. Like I, I've had experience playing with my dad and he's like, oh, this is it, this is it. Oh, I know it. And he's like all in on his stuff and it's like it's so wrong. <laughs> Why would I choose this game for grandparents? Of course, it's a broad statement, but grandparents tend to love trivia. They love to watch the news. So combining this along with some uh, wagering and the party element is a perfect game for playing with grandparents. Number eight, Quinto. This is a roll and write game uh, that is two to six players, but I've played it with more uh, as long as you have enough score sheets. But you are just rolling dice and you're putting numbers in ascending order in three different rows. Now there are a few rules, like you can't place the same numbers in a column. There is strategy involved, but it's as simple as putting rolling dice and putting numbers down on a sheet of paper. Uh, you can choose to roll one, two, or all three dice. One really cool thing about this game is the active player must put a number down, but everyone else that's playing has the option. So they're like, oh, that 15, I, I, I want that 15, let me put that down. Or, oh, one, yes, definitely putting that down. So cool little strategy involved. Um, why'd I choose this? Most classic games and games that your grandparents have probably played um, have involved dice and putting numbers in order, things like that. Simple, great game to play with grandparents. Number seven is Timeline. It is a game that's two to eight players. You have a hand of different events that have happened um, and you're just trying to put them in order in a timeline. Simple, but 
very difficult because these things, whether, you know, there are many different versions of this game, but really cool, really simple concept. And if you get it correctly, you're good. If you get it wrong, then you have to take another card and your hand gets a little bigger and it takes you longer to get rid of all your cards because you're trying to get rid of all your cards to win the game. Um, why? Why would I choose this one? Kind of goes back to grandparents love to watch the news. They uh, typically love history and historical events. Um, and, you know, it might have been something that they lived through. So it's cool. There are cool experiences there. And that might even give them an advantage, which is which is great. This game is a hit. It's a, it's a great one to play with uh, your grandparents. Number six, Illusion. It is a game uh, for two to five players, and it is a pattern recognition game, and you are putting cards in order from the least amount of color in a certain card to the greatest amount of color in a certain card. And honestly, it, they're optical illusions, so it's really cool, and it's, it is difficult, um, but it's difficult and easy at the same time. It's easy to learn and understand. Boom, it's, you get to play right away, but uh, it's difficult to master because these percentages are really hard and they're optical illusions. Um, but, so you put, the, you put the card in a row, kind of like timeline, and you might be right, you might be wrong. It depends on the person um, that goes next and says, hey, is this right? I don't think you're right. And the row has to be completely correct. If it is correct, uh, the person that got challenged gets the card and the person that challenges does not. But if it was incorrect, the person that challenged gets the card and the first one to get like four cards wins. It, it's simple. It's a, it's a great one to play with grandparents. Now, why? I, I consider it like a puzzly type game and grandparents love to put puzzles together. Um, so my grandparents do. And it, it's a great game to play with grandparents. All right, number five. Uh, number five is a, becoming a modern day classic game. It is Code Names. This game is a game for two to eight players. You are, you've got a team or a partner and you're giving one word clue to your partner or other teammates. And um, you're trying to get them to guess the clue or clues, might be more than one clue. And if they're wrong, the other team gets the point, or it could be like an innocent bystander where nothing happens, or if you accidentally hit the assassin card, then the game's over and you lose. Um, but this game is simple, clue giving, but there's, I say it's simple, but it can be tough. If you're not on the same page as your partner, or if you got some tough clues, it can be a challenge for sure. But why, why grandparents? Why play with your grandparents? Well, it is a clue giving game and that is common for, you know, different games, whether it's charades or different classic games, but you're given a clue and it's a team game. So it's not like, hey, you're on your own, good luck. You're playing with a partner, playing with uh, a team, and that can really help play games with your grandparents. Number four. Patchwork. Now this is a two player only game and it's an abstract strategy game that involves drafting polyomino tiles, uh, Tetris looking shapes. They're not all, I mean some of them are very funky. Um, but it is a simple game of trying to fill your board uh, with these different shapes and that's, that's the game. Collect buttons and that's the currency uh, to pay for the pieces. It's really cool and there's a little catch-up mechanism where if someone's far in front of you on the track, you get, to, you get another turn. Um, it's a really, really cool game. Um, simple but, but fun and strategic. There's also like the strategy of like you can choose a tile that uh, prevents opponents from getting what they need. You can be worried about yourself or your opponent. That's up to you. Um, why would I choose this game? It is a puzzle game. Like I said, grandparents typically love puzzles. Um, quilting. When I think of my grandparents, my grandmother loves to quilt. And it's got similarities to Tetris. Now, depending on how old your grandparents are, uh, that might not 
mean anything to them. But some might have played Tetris. It's a great one to play with your grandparents. All right, number three, King Domino. This is a game for two to four players, and it is a tile drafting and also tile placement game. You're basically trying to uh, create a five by five grid, and you get points by having terrain types, the same terrain types, but also crowns in them. It's a really cool mechanism where you can choose like the best, the best tile of that grouping, but the next turn, you're gonna go, probably gonna go last. So you like get a better tile, but you sacrifice turn order. So you might be stuck with something the next turn. Really simple uh, game, but it is strategic. Okay. Why would the grandparents like to play this game? Um, well, for starters, when I think of my grandparents playing games, they love dominoes. They love playing classic dominoes. Um, the tiles that you're drafting in King Domino are dominoes. The difference is they have like different terrain types, whether it's water or grassland uh, or forest, instead of like a, a two and a six, you know, but it is a type of domino. Dominoes have been around for a long time. So uh, this game is a great game to play with your grandparents. All right, number two. Number two is Skull King. This is a trick-taking game uh, for two to six players, but it is an individual trick-taking game. Um, and you must accurately get the amount of tricks that you claim to get. So at the beginning, you'll say, yo, ho, ho, and you'll say, oh, I'll take you know three tricks. You'll have like three, you'll put three out. And you have to get those, you have to get three tricks. If you do not win three tricks, you go negatives. It's a brutal game. Why would the grandparents like this game? Well, my grandparents love trick-taking games and the game in particular is Rook. And I grew up, they taught me how to play Rook. So much fun. The difference is that's a partner trick-taking game, uh, but there are a lot of trick-taking games, you know, spades, hearts, different things um, like that. But this game, is a lot of fun if there was a few wrinkles in it because there are a few special cards that will change the game up where my grandparents are used to like hey the 14 of green was played so i know the 13's high it doesn't always work out like that in skull king which really is entertaining you might throw a 14 of yellow down you're like got this but boom pirate and then you're like the pirate person's like, yes, got it. And then someone's like, boom, Skull King. <laughs> so it's crazy, but it's so much fun. Um, and it always, always uh, brings laughter and, and just happiness. It's a great game to play with your grandparents. All right, here we are. Number one. The number one game to play with your grandparents is Suro. This game is a game for two to eight players. It plays great with the more players, the better for this game. It is a lot of fun. It is a hand management, route building, tile laying game. Uh, you have three like tiles in your hand and you choose, and you've got a pawn, um, and you your pawn has to take the route that you lay down. If your pawn goes to the edge of the map or runs into someone else, you're out of the game. You're out, <laughs> which I'm not a huge fan of player elimination games, but this game's quick, so it's all good. It's a quick, it says like 15 minute game, uh, 15 minutes per game. It's one of those where you're gonna play it again. It's interesting, I picked this one number one, but I actually um, don't have many reasons like for classic elements of other games. Um, but the main reason is I've played it with my grandparents, I've had so much success. You can play it with kids, it is one of those games that's so simple. It's like, okay, you just gotta lay down tiles and follow the path and hope that you don't run into anybody. Just be the last one standing. Um, it's a lot of fun. It looks really nice and um, it will definitely be a hit with grandparents and 
everyone. All right, guys, that was my top 10. I hope you enjoyed it. Please, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you enjoyed it. There'll be more top 10s, uh, live playthroughs, unboxing, recommendations, and reviews uh, ahead. So thanks so much for joining and remember to keep playing games and go get those games.